let us start with the next lecture that is law of mass action so this law states that the rate of a chemical reaction you know what is rate rate of reaction means change in concentration with time the rate of a chemical reaction at each instant is proportional to the concentration product of all the reactants this rate is proportional to concentration product of all the reactants this a plus b converted into c these are the reactant the product of the concentration of all the reactant to this the rate is proportional so rate is proportional to concentration of a and b where this k is the rate constant now as we are studying equilibrium so we are interested in equilibrium constant now for this equilibrium constant how can you write this for this equilibrium constant i am writing this equilibrium in short equilibrium constant suppose you have the reaction a plus b reversible reaction then rate of forward reaction it's proportional to concentration of a and concentration of b and rate of reverse reaction it is proportional to concentration of c into concentration of d now at equilibrium what happens rates of both these reaction forward reaction and backward reaction or reverse reaction they become equal so rate of forward reaction it is equal to rate of reverse reaction at equilibrium so you can write this kf into concentration of a into concentration of b will be equal to kr into concentration of c into tens concentration of d concentration of d okay so what is this kf and kr this is the rate constant for forward reaction and the reverse reaction now for let us proceed with the next slide here i write the same thing again for your better understanding that is kf concentration of a to concentration of b A uh, concentration of C into concentration of D. So K F ratio of this both the constant uh, constants that is equal to K C. So you can write the uh, substitute the values for this C D concentration of C is. divided by concentration of a into concentration of b okay so where this k is nothing but the kc which is denoted here this is the equilibrium constant now consider the reaction would we consider the reaction like this reverse reaction c moles of c and d moles of d so so the equilibrium constant for this reaction will be concentration of c raised to c d raised to d this is so d then concentration of a is to a and concentration of b is to This should actually be the same. Okay. Now, if the reaction is reversed, same reaction, this same reaction, if it is reversed like this, okay. So for this K dash C. Will be equal to concentration of A raised to A, concentration of B raised to B, and concentration of C raised to C, and concentration of D raised to D. In short, 
this will be inverse of this space. So the equilibrium constant of the reverse chemical reaction is K dash C and it is the reciprocal of equilibrium constant Kc. So this Kc, Kc is equal to inverse of this K dash C that is inverse of this Kc. So this is the inverse relation when you reverse the reaction. So K dash C will be equal to inverse of this Kc. Same thing you can write by taking an example. For example, you take a simple example uh, reaction like N2 plus price H2. This is already a balanced one. It gives price in H3. I write down the equation for Kc. Concentration of product divided by concentration of reactant. So, what is the product here? Ammonia. How many moles of ammonia you try to raise to the power? Then, how many moles of N2? One mole. How many moles of H2 are there? Three moles. So, it should, be, it should go to the rest to the power. So, this is the equation for Kc. Now, if the reaction is reversed, same reaction if you write in the reverse form N2 plus price H2. So K dash C for this particular reaction would be concentration of N2 to concentration of H2 rest to 3 because there are 3 moles of H2 here. NH3, how many moles of NH3? 2 moles. So it should go up upwards rest to the power. So Kc equals to 1 upon K dash C or K1 equals to K1 equals to 1 by K2. You can So here you can see Kc is like this. So exactly opposite it with the K dash C. So Kc is equal to 1 upon K dash C. Or K dash C equals to 1 by Kc. Vice versa. You can write the reaction. If you start, if you um, write this as K dash C, you have to make this case. And vice versa. You can write in either way. Also, but this would remain the same. This depending on the reactions which are given, which you are considering as a KC and which you are considering as a for K dash. So that's up to you. You can revert both things. You can solve the numericals based on this at this point of view. So this is very important for these equations. Now, here the number of moles should be considered always. This is again an important thing. Uh, here there are two moles of NH3 and three moles. So that should be written properly. Okay. Now, let us proceed for the next. Now, so far, we have expressed this equilibrium constant of the reactions in term of molar concentration, isn't it? Of reactants and products. Now, if the reaction is taking place in gaseous condition, gaseous system is there. So we'll have to apply here for the gaseous molecules, you have to uh, apply your ideal gas equation that is PV equals to NR. This, if the concentration is expressed in terms of the, for this, not in terms of moles per liter or moles per meter cube, rather in pressure in bar, then you have to consider PV equals to NRT for the gaseous molecules. PV equals to NRT. Or P equals to N by V upon N by V into RT, where temperature, T is what? T is the temperature in Kelvin. T is in Kelvin. Temperature in Kelvin. This is temperature in Kelvin. In Kelvin. Now, this N by V, N is nothing but as you know, N is <coughs> smallest number, uh, number of moles. V is the 
concentration expressed in moles per meter cube. Now, if the concentration C is moles per liter or moles per dm cube, and pressure it is in taken in bars. So this N by V is the concentration expressed in moles per meter cube. Remember, not dm cube, moles per meter cube, volume in meter cube. Now, if concentration C is in moles per liter or moles per dm cube, you know, one liter equals to one dm cube. You can either write liter or dm cube. And pressure, if it is in bar, then this P will be equal to, instead of this, for this equation, instead of this N by D, you can write, instead of this N by D, you can write here, P will be equal to CRP. So, or P equals to concentration of gas into R. Okay. So here R is universal gas constant, as you all know, that is 0 0.0831 bar liter per mole to Kelvin. Now at constant temperature, the pressure of the gas at constant temperature, the pressure of the gas is proportional to the concentration of the gas. So this information is important. So when you are expressing the terms in terms of partial pressure with respect to partial pressure, we'll have to consider that P equal to CRT or P equals to concentration of gas into RT. Okay, now let us proceed further for the next slide. Now, equilibrium constant with respect to partial pressure. So, what is this partial pressure? When two gases are mixed together, every gas has its own pressure. And in mixed condition, when they are mixed together, the pressure exerted by each one of them, it is called as the partial pressure. So this partial pressure is nothing but the pressure of the gas when they are mixed together in the mixed condition of individual gas, obviously. Means if you are mixing two gases together like uh, H2 and NH3, ammonia and hydrogen gas, and whatever is the pressure individually of H2 when it is kept separately, whatever is the pressure of ammonia when it is kept separately and what, what is the pressure when they are mixed together, it's called as the partial pressure. Means partial pressure is the pressure of the individual gas when it is in mixed condition. They are mixed together. So equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant with respect to respect to partial pressure. Now, I hope you understood what is partial pressure, pressure of the gas in mixed condition. When the two gases or three gases or four gases are mixed together, which is denoted by Kp, which is equilibrium constant with respect to partial pressure. Now, suppose we are having this equation, A moles of A gas, B moles of B gas, forming C moles of C gas plus B moles of B gas. Now, how will you write Kp for this in terms of partial pressure, remember, which is denoted by Kc. This is the partial pressure of C gas as to C. These are the number of moles of this C gas. This P is the partial pressure into D, D, D moles of the gas. PA is the partial pressure of A gas. A is the number of moles into PB is to D. So what are these PA, PB, PC, and PD? These are the partial pressures of 
PATB, PC, and PD. These are the partial pressures of AB and C. Partial pressures of AB, C, and D, respectively. Okay. Now, for a mixture of ideal gases, as I told, what is partial pressure? pressure so, it must be in mixed condition. So, for a mixture of ideal gases, the partial pressures of right for a mixture of we're talking about ideal gases for a mixture of ideal gases considering ideal condition because we have applied this ideal gas equation the partial pressure of each component partial pressure of each component whatever the gases you are mixing together. So each one of them, partial pressure of each component partial pressure of each component it is proportional to its concentration to its concentration of what? Concentration of that gas. Concentration at constant temperature. Concentration at constant concentration at constant temperature. Okay. It means that PA, that is the partial pressure of A gas, it is proportional to concentration at constant temperature. Now, if you apply this equation to this ideal gas equation that is Pa into V will be equal to Na into R. What is this Na upon V? Na upon V, that is number of moles of A divided by its volume, which is the molar concentration. It is molar concentration. of A in moles per dm Okay, means this uh, Na upon V, this is nothing but the concentration of A. So you can write, instead of this Pa into V, instead of this Na upon V, what can you write here? Like this. Again, that is, we have got this equation. Okay, where this M A upon V, as I told on the other side also, that is equal to concentration of A. So instead of this, you can write P A equals to concentration of A into R A. For the same, P B will be equal to concentration of B into R. Okay. Then same for Pc equals to concentration of C into R. And why do we have to introduce this term R D? Because we are talking about the gaseous components. So again P D will be equal to concentration of D into okay. now we have come up to this. PA, PB, PC, and PD. Now, by using this information, we'll be able to find out the relationship between KP and KC. This is important. Relationship between KP and KC. We have to derive this equation. Relationship between KP and KC. There are many numericals can be asked from this and may be asked to derive the equation also. So right start from here. This C moles of C. Don't forget to write gas here. Physical state is very important when you study the chemical equilibrium or even electrochemistry also. 
Now substitute the value of PA, PB, PC, and PD. Now KP will be equal to here. Concentration of PC raised to C into concentration of PD raised to D. Okay. Then concentration of PA raised to A and concentration of PB raised to B. These are AB, small AB, these are the number of moles because they are earlier came across this thing here. This one. You know this. So let us proceed further. Now, now substitute the values of PA, PB, PC, and PD. Come here. You know what is PA, PB, PC, and PD here. PA, PB, PC, and PD. So we'll substitute here. Here now. That one. So that is equal to concentration of C raised to C into RT, concentration of D raised to D, RT raised to C. Okay. Then concentration of D raised to D into RT raised to D. So everything here, this PC has to be raised to C. Right? So each factor should be raised to C. Don't write only for C raised to C. Don't leave with this RT raised to C. Don't write just RT. It should be raised to C, remember. Because this whole thing, this whole thing is raised to C. Then write down your concentration of A raised to A, RT raised to A. It is a simple packet, no? it's a square packet. This is D raised to B, then simple bracket RT raised to B. This is because this is not the concentration term, remember. This should be square. It means that conventionally it is, it is the concentration, remember. Then equals to, now you can make this C raised to C. Find out the common. What is common here? RT. So RT raised to C plus D. Then here concentration of A raised to A, concentration of B raised to B. Then find out the common term that is RT raised to A plus B. Okay. Now again you can write in the next one. Write on the same slide for your understanding over here. So you can write the next as KP equals to. I'm not sure how much space I can. I'll try to accommodate the things. C raised to C D raised to D. Then A raised to A. B raised to B, be very clear about this ABC, into RT raised to C plus D, C plus D, put it in a bracket, minus A plus B. Okay. So this KP will be equal to C raised to C, D raised to D divided by A raised to A, the simple mathematics, B raised to B into RT raised to. Now this is C plus D minus A plus B here. It's a little congested, it has become this. This is C plus D minus A plus B. So this minus this, so you can write for this whole thing, C plus D minus A plus B, that will be equal to, you can write as delta. Because what are these? C, A, B, C, D, small A, B, C, D, these are nothing but the number of moves, which is denoted by small A. So this is RT raised to delta M. But as you all know, what is KC? 
Kc equals to concentration of C raised to C, concentration of B raised to B, and then concentration of A raised to A small a, concentration of B raised to B, isn't it? Now substitute instead of this whole thing, you can write here Kc. So write on the next step, Kp will be equal to Kc into Rt raised to delta n. So instead of this, this whole thing, what did I write? I wrote here Kc. This is Kc. So I write here Kc. Rt raised to delta n equal to the same. So this is the equation which is used to solve the new fluids based on this. So this derivation, it carries two marks. Very simple. Now, this is the equation it can be asked in examination to, to derive the relationship between kp and kc then the next one will explain this by taking some example by taking reaction now for the reaction if i take the reaction like this h2 plus i2 it gives twice hi Obviously, gaseous medium. So, first start with Kc. Kc for this will be concentration of Hi in gaseous form. Don't forget to write this G. And I have to write here 2 because there are 2 moles. This to the power 2. So, product divided by concentration of reactant. So, it will be H2 gas concentration of H2 into concentration of I2. Okay. Since there are only one one mole, so you need not have to write rest to the power anything. Or you can write AC equals to partial in terms of partial pressure, PHI whole square 2, whole square, then pH2, and then pi Now, since this pHi, that is the partial pressure of HI, equals to what? Concentration of HI into R. What is this pi2? This is nothing but concentration of I2 into RT. And what is this pH2? This will be concentration of H2 into RT because we are expressing them in terms of P, that is partial pressure. So we need to multiply it by RT. Now, th this thing we wrote for KC. Now we want, since this is a gaseous medium, so we have to write it. It's therefore, Kp will be equal to Kp will be equal to PHI square partial pressure of HI divided by PH2 into PI2. Now substitute the value. This is equal to concentration of HI square. But there are two moles here, two. So rest to two into RT square. Then concentration of H2 into RT into concentration of I2 into RT. So this RT square and RT, RT will get cancelled out. So now we are left with only this thing, H, HI square H2 into I2, which is nothing but equal to KC. Isn't it? This is KC, the same thing we got here. So for this particular reaction, KP equals to KC. For this one. 
Now, this is not so every time. Kp will not be equal to Kc for all of the reactions. I'll take the, another example where Kp is not equal to Kc. Suppose I take the example like this. N2 plus twice H2. It gives twice H2. Of course, all the gases. Now, we will start from Kp itself. Kp equals to partial pressure of NH3 raised to 2 because there are two bonds. Then divided by the reactants, partial pressure of N2, partial pressure of H2. Now there are, it has to be raised to 3 because there are three bonds of H2. Okay. Now write the same thing in terms of RT, so concentration of NH3 is 2, 2 and RT square. RT is 2, 2. Then concentration of N2 into RT and concentration of H2 is 2, 3. And it is H2 into RT. Okay. Now, equal to further <coughs> here concentration of NH3 is to 2 minus right here RT divided by N2. Gas here H2 gas is to 3. Now, what should be there? Here, remember, here it is 1 RT, here there are 3 RT cube, and here there are 2. So, this 1 plus 3 becomes 4. So, when it will go to the up in a numerator, it will be 2 minus 4. So, it will be RT raised to minus okay now here you can write this is nothing but this whole thing except this rt what is this this is equal to kc this is nothing but kc so you can write here kp equal to kc into rt raised to Nice. This is the one thing. Okay. Now, what is this RT rest? We know that this equation. We will just write this equation Kp equal to Kc into RT rest to delta N. Now, remember, how to find this delta N, number of moles of product minus number of moles of reactant. How many moles of product are there? Two. How many are reactant? Three plus one, four. So 2 minus 4, it becomes equal to minus 2. So this is the value for this delta n. Now, this RT raised to minus 2, it has come mathematically. Here you can see. And this delta n is also minus 2. So just put this as a KC, and the remaining will be this will be your delta n, RT raised to minus 4. Kp equal to Kc into RT plus 2 minus 2. What are these delta n? Always remember delta n is nothing but the number of moles of gaseous product, gaseous of gaseous product minus number of moles of gaseous reactant. If any aqueous product or reactant is given, just neglect those gaseous reactant. Okay, so in this case, Kp is not equal to Kc. For the earlier example, it was Kp equals to Kc. Is that it? But it's not so for this particular 
reaction. So that's all for this video. We'll come back with the next video next time. Thank you.